What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. So today is January 1st, 2020, first day of the new year, which is uh, is big for like New Year's resolutions, people starting new programs and stuff like that. First of all, let's fix this fucking camera angle, make that shit square. There we go. And um, this video is going to be about how to change your bodybuilding goals, your fitness goals, bodybuilding goals, um, health goals, whatever the whatever goals you have. Uh, more specifically, your athletic goals, like bodybuilding and stuff. And um, over the years, you know, it was for me just gaining mass. You know, when I started training, I went 135 pounds, and I wanted to be huge, right? 135 pounds at 5'9". is not huge. It's not even a big guy. It's not even, like, remotely, like, a normal-sized guy. Like, you're a small dude at 135, right? And um, for the first, you know, two or three years, which actually 2020 makes it, 30 years that I've actually been training. Like I actually started training 30 years ago and I went from 135 pounds to my biggest was 272. In between 272 and 273, which I now I just go to that, I don't round it up, I round it down. So you can see that I put on a lot of size in a short period of time. And my walking around weight was anywhere from 240 to 255. And if I push it up, I'd go a little bit heavier. If I wanted to stay a little bit leaner, I'd, I'd, bring, I'd bring it down to like 225. Today, present day, I walk around at 205. Now, my goal is to get down to about 195, which is where I compete at for physique. Um, that takes a little bit of macro counting and stuff like that. But, you know, this year, my goals have changed. You know, during 2019, I was going through this whole, like, how do I maintain my muscle mass? How do I not change my, my point of view as far as, like, training goes? And really, it was trying to figure out what to do based on injuries that I've had. Now... If you trace back the injuries that I have, none of them started until I started professional wrestling. Once I started pro wrestling, the first thing that happened was, I think it was my ribs, was the first thing I hurt. But I also hurt my hip, my lower back, and I tore my um, my bicep tendon when I was, that's how it actually pushed me out of pro wrestling, was that bicep tendon tear. And I eventually wound up getting addicted to painkillers right after that whole situation. And once those injuries occurred, they led to other injuries for bodybuilding-wise. Like when we have one injury, a lot of times the body compensates in another area and it literally overloads other muscles that really shouldn't be overloaded that much. And you wind up having these issues and these injuries. So now, you know, 2019, I kind of looked at it like I'm leaving the way that I used to train way in the past. Like right? after my pec tear, I was like, all right, I'll just heal up. I'll get back on track. I'll be OK. Right. I know people like, you know, um, Kevin Washington, the Hulk. I had a great conversation with him about his pec tear. And he was able to bench 405 again and do 315 for something like 35 reps or something like that. So I'm like, wait a minute, he didn't have the surgery like I didn't. And, you know, like when you look at him, it's the same type of tear. It's the pec minor that tore off the bone. So I started training heavy again and eventually wound up pulling, not tearing, but pulling my lat. Now that's on the opposite side. So what's happening is I have a weak side this side because the pec is torn and you can feel the instability in the shoulder joint. And it's overloading the other side when I do anything that's barbell based or like this time I was doing chin ups. Anything, if, you know, if you're doing pull downs and stuff like that, it's a little bit different. You get your body in a different position and you're not forced to use at least your body weight. So I really had to revamp my training this year and I said, okay, I have to come up with some new goals. How do I, what do I do now? You know what I mean? Like my whole bodybuilding life has been about building muscle. Now, how do I maintain that muscle, but at the same time not train the way that I'm used to because it takes a certain stimulus to have a certain amount of muscle, right? And that's when I realized, you know, I just need to pull some of this muscle off. Like, I'm not comfortable walking around 215, 220. I'm just not anymore. Like, I've noticed that when I came down with the pec tear, my, my weight came down, obviously. And even though I didn't feel, like, strong, I didn't feel jacked, I didn't feel powerful, I didn't feel like the body below Jerry, I felt good. Like, I finally, for the first time, and I didn't realize it, I felt good. Like, I didn't have a hard time walking upstairs. I didn't have any issues with, like, sleep apnea or anything like that. I had energy, whereas opposed to like, I honestly feel the more muscle that you carry, the more energy it takes to carry that muscle, the easier you get tired, you fatigue easier. So next thing you know, I'm like, I'm feeling like a million dollars. And I'm like, what's the balance between what I used to do and what I need to do now, right? So I embarked on that, that journey. And that journey this year was going back to training like I did when I was 19 and natural before I ever started doing any gear. And I really had to revisit all the things that I used to do. And that's how I train now. I train now using certain routines that I used when I was 19 that I've actually plugged back in now. And it's helping me to maintain the muscle mass at around 200 pounds, but it also allows me to feel good, 
right? Because I'm keeping my muscle mass down, but I can go to the gym, I can train, I don't have to train heavy. I really have to make sure I focus on squeezing the muscles and contracting and then stretching the muscles at the same time. I also add some stretching now into my routine, which I never did before. I was concerned with getting big, not really how mobile I was. And I also threw a little bit of yoga in there. But I've also done a lot of ab work because my core is what's really responsible for my lower back hurting a lot. When my hip doesn't rotate properly, I guess it does something to the lower back as far as the, the muscles start to tighten up your kinetic chain. Well, if I'm training my abs, it keeps my abs tight and keeps my, you know, I, I have a tendency to kind of lean back a little bit when I'm standing. It pulls me a little bit forward and keeps me up straighter. So to get to that point of doing these new exercises, these new routines and stuff, I felt originally like I was going backwards. I'm going back to where I was when I was 19 because I'm the same size now as I was when I was 19, which in the general population would be awesome, right? Because I'm 44 years old. I'm inside. I look like I did when I was 19. There's literally no difference. I'm training like I did. I'm looking the same. I think most people would kill to be able to look like they did at 19 at 44. But for me, I had built myself up so big and so strong that I was going backwards. And that was the hardest part was to go backwards. You know, you're trying to go forwards your whole life and all of a sudden, boom, now you're going to go backwards and get back to where you were when you started. And that's your goal. Your goal is to be back where you started. So if you're at the point now where you're trying to figure out, like, my fitness, my bodybuilding goals, they've run their course. Like, I can no longer do this. And you don't just want to quit and give up, right? Because your lifestyle is in the gym, training, bodybuilding. It's all these different things, right, that are involved with this bodybuilding lifestyle. That's what we call it, right? And you're kind of stuck on the fact that, like, I don't want to go backwards. I remember saying, like, oh, if I wasn't going to the gym and progressing, I would just fucking quit. I wouldn't even go anymore. It's like a waste of time to go and not, you know, progress. Like, that's what my younger mindset was. Like, I need to be getting bigger and stronger all the time or I'll just fucking give up because there's no point in doing it. Then you realize just to even maintain what I had at 19 takes work because I had built myself up from that 135-pound kid. So just to maintain 200 pounds is work. So it's not like you're you know, doing it, it's easy. Like my workouts are not easy. They're still painful. There's still lactic acid build up. I still try to train as hard as I can without pushing myself to the point where I get injured. But that mindset has to change. You have to get back to that mindset, right? Of going to be better and not just bigger, right? So if that's where you're at, if you're like, look, I don't know what goal I want. This is the video for you, right? Here's how to go about it. Cause I, I struggled with it. I really did. Cause I didn't have really anybody to ask about it. And I watched um, people like Jay Cutler, Kevin Lavroni, Sean Ray, all friends of mine, like close friends of mine, and I watched what they went through as they were done competing and they're downsizing, and I asked them questions, right? I asked Sean, and Sean, like when I told Sean I hurt my, my pec, he was like, dude, he goes, I don't even lift anything more than 40 pounds now. He goes, 40 pounds is the limit. He goes, what's the point? Why do I need to? What do I have to prove? And I was like, yeah, I guess that's true. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's Sean. Sean can get away with it. He's like a bodybuilding legend, right? And then Lavroni was like, yeah, man. He goes, if I don't feel like training, I don't even train. He goes, why am I going to train if I don't feel like it? I push myself to the max. So if I want to take a day off, I just take a day off. I was like, shit, you know, that's that's Kevin's way of looking at it, right? He doesn't have to be big anymore. He doesn't have that that ego where he identifies with being the big bodybuilder. Like Kevin can shrink down 180 pounds and he's cool with it, right? Sean's still kind of thick, but I think that's part of his genetics. His genetics just to be thick, right? And then Jay, like I train with Jay, right? So I, I work out with Jay and I'm, I'm watching him train and I'm talking to him. I'm kind of not picking his brain, but I ask him questions and stuff. And he basically goes in, he says, I do like a fitness routine. I said, I do something very moderate. I keep it 10 to 12 reps. I do three to four sets per exercise, which is kind of like the way I was training before, except you got to go a lot lighter now. He goes, I don't try to push it to where I'm hurting. He goes, you know, I don't need to fail an exercise. I don't need to hit all these, these big weights and stuff. He's so basically, I just train like I did, except I just toned down the amount of weight that I use. He goes, but I still train the same way. So now I had three different points of view going, well, which one's the right one? Well, here's the thing. All of them are the right one and all of them are the wrong one. It's right for them. It may be right for me. It may be wrong for me, but it's right for them. And that's when I realized I had to figure out my own way. Like I can't follow Jay's routine, which I did for a little bit. I followed the higher volume, the exact split he was doing because I did the routine with him. You know, and I mean, as far as Kevin goes, taking these off whenever he wants. Like when I take it off, I just don't feel good out of the gym. Like I really don't feel good. I feel energized. I feel like I'm accomplishing something. I feel like I'm taking care of my body. It's all mental when I don't go to the gym. It's not physical. If I take days off that are unscheduled, for me mentally, it helps me stay strict and structured and rigid and that rolls over into my everyday life if i slack off at the gym i have a tendency to slack off with other shit at life because the gym has always been my anchor my place to go my like my my church my my therapist has been everything it's been everything i do since i was 14 years old so okay like okay jay's routine doesn't work for me because maybe it's just my physiology whatever maybe it's not the way i trained back in the day my body's not respond to this and it's cool 
Kevin's way, not so much because I just can't take days off. I like I feel better when I'm in the gym. Kevin feels good when he's out of the gym. You know, I looked at Sean's and I said, well, Sean's only using 40 pounds. Well, that's interesting. Now, 40 pounds is a relative number. That's Sean's number. And I was like, well, why do I have to use 300 pounds, 200 pounds, 100 pounds? Why do I have to use any of that? So now, like, when I'm doing things, I kind of shorten the time between my my um, sets, which I usually go about three minutes between sets when I'm trying to maintain muscle mass or be bigger when I'm competing. Now, I rest about maybe, maybe, maybe 90 seconds, maybe 60 seconds roughly. And I use different positions to fatigue the muscle as opposed to trying to get the muscle to fail with the maximum weight in a hypertrophy range. And I said, okay, that's what I used to do when I was younger. And that got me to this certain point. So I know that worked on my body when I was 19. So let me see what happens now, right? And the video, the, the clip that I just put up that you're going to see that you saw, that's me now. That's me at 205 at 5'9". You know what I mean? Like I really don't look a whole lot smaller than I did when I was doing physique. But I definitely have less muscle mass now, and I'm a little bit fatter than I was, but I'm trying to maintain a fit physique rather than a muscular competition physique. So it's like my goal changed, right? Once your goal changes, then you can go ahead and devise the program to fit your goal. But you have to do the goal first. You have to come up with the goal and have the, the comprehension of what you're going to be doing first. So your goal starts here. Your physique starts here. The brain, there's the brain, I'm pointing to the heart. So your body follows your brain. It follows your mind. So you have to get your mindset right. Now, mindset training is super important. I think that um, Oscar Arden, who used to train Kai Green, Oscar's responsible for a lot of Kai's success, not George Farah. It's Oscar. Oscar is the one that brought him from point A to point B. Actually, it's to say point A to point Y. And then from Y to Z is where George Farah came in. So Oscar's big thing was the mental aspect of the training, which is now something I delve into with my clients as well. When you are in the gym training hard for an hour, 23 hours outside of that gym, that's where you get messed up. That's where you fall short. You fall short in your goals outside of the gym because it affects what's going on inside of the gym. So you need to be mentally strong enough and know what's going on outside of the gym to make adjustments to make sure that what's going on in the gym is what you really need to be doing so that it helps you with your goals. You're progressing. If you're fucking up 23 hours outside the gym and you go to the gym for an hour, those are the guys that you see that never change. They look like shit and eventually give up. So the first thing you do is have a comprehension of what you're doing, right? Come up with a plan. Okay, um, I want to be bigger. So what do I need to do? I obviously need to train heavier. This is what I've been doing. This is what I need to do. I'm going to switch this to this, but I'm not just going to jump into it. Like a lot of people do that. I'm going to go from where I am now and slowly work my way up. So if you're doing sets of 10 to 12 and you're doing five sets of 10 to 12 per body part, now what you do is maybe do four sets of 10 to 12, right? But increase the weight a little bit, right? Because you're doing less sets. You can handle more weight. You're not fatiguing as much. Then go down to three sets of 10 to 12, increasing the weight again because you're not fatiguing as much. Then eventually dropping down to 10 reps, down to eight reps. We're using even more weight, putting you at the bottom end of the hypertrophy range. Now you're training heavier, more hypertrophy, less sets, more intensity. Now you say, okay, that's where I need to be training. Okay, now diet-wise, what do I need? I need X amount of protein, X amount of carbs, X amount of fat. Start tracking your macros, right? Find out where you're at in the macro-wise, make your adjustments. Now you're off and rolling. You're good to go, right? So the, the last thing you got to do is get your nutritional supplements in check. If you take gear, whatever. But nutritional supplements, like what do I need in addition to my food to get me to the point where I need to be successful? So now you have those three things. You have your training. You have your diet. You have your supplementation. Those are the three things you got to get on track. But you need to fit those with your goals. But the problem is if your mind's not in the right place, you don't know how to put the other things in. So getting the mind straight, that's the most important thing at first. So now you got to sit down and go, what do I want to do? Where do I want to be? And how do I get there? Those are the things before you even design a program or a diet or anything like that. But having the strength to say, what I'm doing right now is done. It's run its course. doesn't matter whether Jay Cutler does this, Kevin LeRae does that, Sean Ray does that, you know, um, whether um, fucking Phil Heath does this, fucking Ronnie Coleman did that, doesn't matter. What matters is what you need to do. That's where you have to wrap your head around. You're an individual. What you need to do for you is not what everybody else is doing. That's the hard part. Once you wrap your head around that you're an individual, you need to blaze your own trail, then you can go on and start picking the things that you need to do. And you may need to experiment a little bit. I mean, it's, God knows they did plenty of that. But eventually you'll hit what you need to, to be on and you'll be just progressing going where you're at. If you need to go where you look like, I'm tired of being 250 pounds, I need to get down to 200. A lot of people just stop eating and do a bunch of cardio. I mean, that's one way to do it, but... Same way you built yourself up, build yourself down. I mean, tear yourself down. 
If you're doing sets of 315 for 12 reps, do 315 for 10 reps, 315 for eight reps. Then drop it down to 225 for eight reps. Maybe down to 185 for eight reps. Like reverse yourself like that so your body slowly comes back down. So you don't all of a sudden crash and your body like goes crazy because pushing your body in either direction too fast fucks you up. It doesn't work right. I don't, I don't understand why, but I do know that the body is really wants to stay in one steady state, right? Homeostasis. It wants to stay there. It doesn't want to go this way. It doesn't want to go that way. So you have to kind of coax it each way. And the slower that you do things in either direction, the better off you'll be able to maintain them when you get there. But the whole key, guys, is to get that mindset first. Mindset training. I think 2020, for most people, should be the year of training your mind to be able to train your body. Because once your mind gets to the point where you have control over your mind, you can make changes like this and your body follows. It's easy. Like, you have control over everything all the time. So hopefully this video helps some of you guys out that are kind of out there just flailing in the wind and not knowing what's going on. Because God knows I was there myself plenty of times. But the bottom line is, guys... There's always room for improvement, and you don't have to stay stuck in one thing because you're not sure what else to do. Take your time, sit down, think it through. After you think it through, then devise the plan based on what you thought through. If you have to, do like I did. Ask people. Ask me. Shoot me an email and ask me. Jared, what do you think I should do about this? What do you think I should do about that? Contact Jay Cutler. Send him an email. Send him a message. Whatever. Ask him. Hey, Jay, what do you do? Like, If you were going to get smaller, what would you do? If you're going to get bigger, what would you do? Get different ideas and think logically what may or may not work for you and then start applying it. And I think you'd be surprised how far you go just by changing your mindset first and allowing your body to follow. Training at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. But don't fight. BossyTraining.com is the blog. It's the body will follow bicep. And we are out.